Do you remember the Nintendo 3DS launch? It really was an exciting time. The console had a lot of promise to be a huge step for Nintendo in the handheld market after the massive success of the DS. However, the 3DS famously launched with a pretty small set of launch titles. Pilot Wings Resort was a pretty neat title, and later that year we got some admittedly great remakes of Nintendo 64 games in Star Fox 64 3D and Ocarina of Time 3D, but honestly that was really about it. Sadly, 3DS owners didn't really have much to play for the first year of this console's life. However, when the 3DS eShop launched, this did open the door for a very memorable little puzzle game to get the spotlight that holiday. This is Pushmo. Pushmo, or Pull Blocks in Europe, is a puzzle platformer game developed by Intelligent Systems, a prolific developer known for their work on Fire Emblem, The Wars series, WarioWare, and Paper Mario, to name a few. Released on the 3DS eShop exclusively for an affordable $7, this game really captured the attention of lots of 3DS owners when it first came out. Upon its release, Pushmo was met very positively, and upon jumping into this game, it's not tough to see why. Personally, I love puzzle games. I know that they're not for everybody, but there is something just so satisfying about working on a puzzle and hitting that aha moment and clearing it. I love just sitting back and knocking out a few puzzles in a short session, and Pushmo leans itself well to this type of gameplay. So, the basic premise is that there is a child stuck at the top of this Pushmo, and Mallow, our main character, needs to get up there and rescue them. You can push and pull these blocks to create platforms forms to use to get up to the top of the pushmo and save the child. You can pull them up to three blocks out, and you can also push and pull them from the sides to be able to pull them out further from various angles. You can also rewind time if you get stuck. This may seem really simple, and it is very simple, but this structure allows for tons of super interesting puzzles where you'll be jumping up and down from various heights to figure out how to push and pull these blocks to get to rescue the child. There are also some stage gimmicks too, like manholes that can take you to the corresponding manhole on another side of the puzzle, or these switches that will automatically pull the blocks of that color all the way out. These gimmicks are super easy to understand and get the hang of, but they allow these puzzles to get even more complex. I do think the game goes a little bit overboard with the hand-holdy tutorials, but once you start taking on the real puzzles, you'll see why it's crucial that you fully understand these mechanics. Pushmo can get challenging and can really test your spatial awareness, but I don't believe that it ever gets to a point where it's frustrating or not fun. Solving each puzzle always feels fair and feasible, even if one gives me a hard time. Something I love about Pushmo is its use of color and aesthetics. Firstly, this game's art style is adorable and instantly lovable. It looks like you're playing in a world of plushies. These puzzles use color to make it really easy to discern what blocks you're pulling out and what blocks you've already moved. It's also worth noting that Pushmo has tons of pixel art levels as well, called murals. These are so charming and they really show the potential with Pushmo's puzzle mechanics since they can work really well in almost any kind of structure or art piece that the developers throw at you. For the asking price of $7, Pushmo Pushmo really does offer a whole lot of value. There's over 250 puzzles to solve here, which is a ton of puzzles that will keep you entertained for a while, but there was also Pushmo Studio, where players could also submit their own puzzles, seemingly creating an endless supply of content. Personally, I think that Pushmo is an incredibly fun game that is affordable and packs tons of brilliance and charm into it for its low asking price. So since Pushmo did so well, it was inevitable that we'd get a sequel. So in 2012, we got Crashmo, another 3DS eShop title at $8.99. Crashmo isn't just more of the same though, but instead it moves on to different yet familiar feeling puzzles. Crashmo still features the same controls for Mallow, but these puzzles are physics based, where players will need to bring these blocks crashing down to rescue these little birds. So, if a block is on top of another and you pull it out, it will fall down, allowing you to create steps to clear the level. There's also additional mechanics here too, like switches that can scoot the block in one direction. There's a much bigger 3D space this time around for you to experiment in, and these Crashmo puzzles really require you to think outside of the box, even more so than Pushmo did. You'll be using blocks to push other blocks while keeping other blocks stable, and these puzzles can get really challenging. Crashmo is definitely much tougher than Pushmo by a pretty wide margin, and I do think that you'd be better off playing Pushmo first to get the hang of the series approach to puzzling. Not that I think that Crashmo is too hard or that it isn't fun to play, quite the contrary. I just think that Crashmo is definitely at its best when you're more familiar with the series and how it approaches puzzle gameplay. This is another game that will really give you lots of value for the asking price, with 100 levels to complete and the return of the Crashmo Studio where you can create your own levels. Yeah, there's less levels this time around, but they're much more complex and I think that this game offers a comparable amount of content to its predecessor. Crashmo might be more challenging and a departure from Pushmo, but I personally think it's worth your time if you enjoy physics-based puzzlers. However, some of you may be thinking, what if I just want more of the Pushmo puzzles? What do I do then? Well, Pushmo World has you covered. This game came out on the Wii U in 2014 
retailing for $9.99 and is a shiny HD follow-up to Pushmo. This game features 250 new Pushmo puzzles that play very similarly to the first game. There's also some new mechanics in these puzzles like linked blocks which will move all blocks of a certain color, yin and yang blocks which will push in when the other block is pulled out and vice versa, and time blocks that will automatically push themselves back in after a period of time. These mechanics are all really cool and I think that they allow for some really fun new puzzles. Pushmo World is a fun sequel with a lot of puzzles to play, but honestly, it is just kind of more of the same. That's not a bad thing. I could play through tons of these puzzles and enjoy every second of it, but Pushmo World isn't really doing a ton that the original game didn't do. So, if you're interested in something really new, Stretchmo might be more up your alley. Stretchmo suddenly released in 2015 for the 3DS as a free initial download and is a really neat twist on the Pushmo formula. You see, instead of just pushing and pulling these Pushmo out in one direction, Stretchmo allows you to take any side of a piece and stretch it to clear levels. This is a cool twist on the original idea while still feeling very very faithful to that original game. While I personally enjoy Crash Mo, if that game doesn't interest you because it was too far of a departure from the original, you will likely enjoy this. Stretch Mo puzzles are a lot more dynamic than Push Mo levels, but I feel like they strike a really good balance between Push Mo's and Crash Mo's difficulty. Stretch Mo also had a kind of interesting rollout compared to the other games. This was in 2015, and at this time Nintendo was kind of dabbling in free-to-play games with games like Rusty's Real Deal Baseball. This model was kind of weird, honestly. You are basically downloading a demo, but with the ability to purchase individual minigames or level packs, which was kind of a neat idea, but unfortunately wound up turning a lot of people off to these games, because they kind of presented themselves as if they included microtransactions. Stretch Mode was similar. There were a few levels that you could play for free, but the rest of the game was divided into four level packs, each with a unique theme and playable character. You could buy each pack individually or collectively for a discounted $9.99, and buying at least one pack unlocked the Stretch Mode Studio. This pricing model is so strange to me. At least with Rusty's Real Deal Baseball, the whole mechanic of that game was haggling Rusty on the price of the games to get them for less, but here all I feel like this pricing model did was stick Stretch Mo with the microtransactions label, even though that's not really what these level packs are. They were one-time charges that were basically no different than just paying up front for the game like any other game on the eShop. Anyways, you have four level packs here. Mallow's Playtime Plaza, which has more basic levels, Poppy's Sculpture Square, which features murals of animal and objects, Corrin's Fortress of Fun, which features obstacles and enemies, and Papa Blox's NES Expo, which features classic NES characters. Each of these is fun in its own right, but Corrin's Fortress of Fun is my personal favorite since these enemies really add a lot to the game. These enemies can knock you down, but you actually need to use them to solve a lot of these puzzles, which I think is a really cool idea that I wish Pushmo and Pushmo World would have tried. Stretchmo feels like a natural evolution of the previous games in this little series, creating puzzles in a 3D space that are fun and force you to think outside of the box without losing its simple puzzle approach. Stretch Mo is a really good entry into the series that I feel was held back by its pricing system and minimal fanfare. However, I really do implore you to give it a shot. Sadly, after Stretch Mo, this series has disappeared. There were rumors that Crash Mo World was in development for the Wii U in 2016 and would have been an expansion of Crash Mo like Push Mo World was for Push Mo. Unfortunately, that game appears to have been canceled and there haven't been any signs of Push Mo returning anytime soon. This is a major bummer but the even worse part is that the entire Pushmo series is going to become unplayable soon. These games were released exclusively on the 3DS and Wii U eShops, and with these storefronts closing down pretty soon, we're about to lose any official means of playing them. They were never released in any physical capacity, so once they're gone from the eShop, they're gone for good. This absolutely saddens me. It's obviously tough to see the eShop close and for us to lose a lot of legacy Nintendo content, but seeing this series get lost to time is a shame. I am personally holding out hope that we'll get a collection of these games for the Switch or maybe even a new entry. But until that happens, you should pick up and play this lovable puzzle game series on 3DS and Wii U before they're lost to time. If you like this video and you aren't subscribed, please consider subscribing to the channel. The vast majority of people who watch my videos aren't subscribed and subscribing is completely free and really helps me out. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope that you have a great rest of your day.